Everybody, it's Franny and we're back with our 1964 Porsche 356 C car. Today's project is going to be the carburetors. Now this car is really really hard to start and even when it's run the previous day it's still really difficult to get started. You even have to pour gas down the carburetors and stuff that's kind of bad. So what I want to do is pull both carburetors off the car, put them on the bench and do a full rebuild on them and we'll start from there. Once I get them back on the car we'll go ahead and tune them properly and adjust the linkages. It can be a little bit of a fussy process, but once you get it done, boy, it really does. The car just runs and idles on the tick if everything's right. So, all right, it's gonna be a bit of work. Let's get started. We're gonna start by removing our air cleaner. On the C cars, there's a crankcase breather on the oil fill. So we're, I'm gonna disconnect that first. It's really simple, it's just a clamp. All right, that just gets it loose so we can pull it off. The air cleaner is held on with this bolt right here, so we can, it's just 11 millimeters. So we just need to loosen it up a little bit. There we go. And we just wiggle the air cleaner off. There we go. Air cleaner off, we'll just set it aside. To pop off the ball links on the throttle linkage, I like to just use the open end of a 10 millimeter wrench. It works great, actually. We can just get this in here like that and go boink, and they pop right off. Super simple. I can fold this guy back, get it out of the way. Our next step's going to be to loosen up this 17 millimeter banjo bolt here that's holding the fuel line on and kind of be ready with a rag and a little cup because it'll probably dribble out a bit of fuel. Just loosen this guy up. There's the fuel. That's what we thought. Should be a fiber washer on the other side as well. So two fiber washers, one on each side, one on the outside on the bolt side and one on the other side. Great time to inspect these little fiber washers. Now I didn't see any evidence of it actually leaking, so I think they're in great shape and we can totally just reuse these. The bolt itself looks really good, threads look good, it looks nice and clean, so I think we're good with the bolt. The last thing we need to do is remove the little 12 millimeter bolts holding it on, four of them, and there's a washer, should be a floppy washer underneath each one. You wanna be very careful because you're gonna have an opening to the intake manifold there. So make sure you count, collect, all four of your nuts and all four of your washers. And to get those 12 millimeters off, you're gonna want a short little stubby 12 mil millimeter wrench. Anything too long is just gonna kinda get in the way in there. So pick your shortest 12 millimeter you got. These little guys are awesome for that. And it's actually not too difficult to get all the bolts off. And I like to use a little magnet here to Pull the washer off, seems to work really well. One thing to be careful of as you're loosening this up, can you see that little thumb screw here? You wanna be careful with the edge of your wrench that you don't slam into it and bend it because theirs are made out of brass and they're easily bent and it's so easy to just sort of go gouge into this thing and bend it. All right, before we take our carburetor off, we've counted all four of our nuts and all four of our washers, so there's no chance anything's gonna fall in there. When I work on the carburetors, if I have to do both, I'll usually do them one at a time. And the reason is that if you do both of them at the same time and empty both of the carburetors, it takes forever to fill them all back up again. But if you still have gas in one of your carburetors, at least the engine will fire on that side and it'll run for a bit and it can fill up the other one. It just makes starting the car back up a ton easier. So we're just going to work on this one first and once we get this one done we'll install it, start the car, and then we'll move on to the other one. So all we need to do at this point is literally just lift this guy straight up. There we go. And there's our prize. So we've got our carburetor out and we'll go ahead and put this on the bench and get started on it. Okay. 
Tearing down one of these Zenith carburetors is actually pretty easy. They come apart pretty easily. We're gonna start by taking off the top. I'm really curious as to how much gas is actually inside the carburetor. I have a sneaky suspicion it's gonna be a bit low. We start with the top. These bolts holding on the top of the carburetor here, you can take them off with a screwdriver and it looks like somebody has tried that, but they've also kind of, uh, they're pretty soft. They sort of cheesed them out a little bit. I think a nut driver is much better. This is an eight millimeter nut driver. Go ahead and pull these off. There should be a little lock washer underneath every one of these little bolts. Before I take the last couple of bolts out, I'm gonna disconnect the accelerator pump. There's just a little teeny clip here. They're kind of teeny weeny little parts. You wanna hold on to them as you take it apart. So it's just a little clip here, then a washer, and then a spring. There we go. And then we can just pull this, finish taking these guys off. The last bolt on the left side here actually has an arm that's holding on the spring, the return spring for the throttle bodies. So we'll go ahead and take that off. There we go. Okay. Now we can just lift our top off. We've got our accelerator pump here on this side over here and it's gonna have a plunger that goes down in so you'll see that as you pull it up. Now this top should come right off now that we have all the bolts out of it but it appears that somebody may have sort of half glued this gasket on the top of it. It's not really necessary. There's a tremendous amount of gas up here. It's not really necessary. All right, well, to get it off, I'm going to use the rubber mallet here and see if I can sort of lightly tap it off. There it goes. Now we just lift it straight up. Boy, that's tight. That accelerator pump's really tight in there. I don't know why it's so tight. That might be part of our problem. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, mm. there it goes. Wow, that's super tight. Let's set this aside. Carefully remove our gasket so we don't rip it. There we go. Set that aside over here. Now before we pull the float out completely, I wanna sort of bop it a little bit and make sure it returns to the top and make sure that it's not punctured anywhere and sinking. That's really important. Good, good, seems fine. All right, we can set that aside. You always wanna look at the sediment down in the bowl there. And on the other side, we can see a little bit of sediment as well. We got sediment on both sides here. Let's see if it'll come loose. Yeah, it is. So that's what's at the bottom of the float balls. So kind of brown and yucky. Not sure exactly what it is, but we'll go ahead and clean it out. I'm gonna put on my silly cheaters here. It's just a lot easier to see. And that way, if anything sort of does, you know, spray back up, it will protect my eyes at least a little bit. So, oh, that's much better. Let's continue on with our air jets and emulsifier tubes up here at the top. There's a single screw here that sort of holds this whole assembly in. This guy here, and pull that out. Now I'm starting with a nice clean new dish here because these parts are kind of all go together. I kind of like to keep all of the parts that go together in a certain dish here. So I use a bunch of different dishes and that way when I go to reassemble it, I know what goes where and whether I got everything or not. Now these air corrections, so you want to probably take a look at that, make sure they're the same certainly. So they're two tens and 140 it looks like. Okay, now these emulsifier tubes should come straight up. A lot of times they're a little tight though. Well, we may need to encourage them a little bit from the bottom, so we'll get to that a little bit later. Spin the carburetor around here. These little guys here are the accelerator pump jets themselves. They just kind of go straight through here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull both of these out. So the way this works is there's a little plug here with a jet on it and these are sized and a little rubber washer here. You wanna take a look at that and make sure it's in great shape and good and soft. This one feels good. 
Looks like somebody's probably rebuilt this carburetor not too long ago. These washers, if they've been in too long, will, will be very flat. And these are still pretty rounded, so they seem to be in pretty good shape. The actual accelerator pump jets themselves are sort of wedged in there, and I have a better luck if I, once I've gotten the emulsifier tubes out, to sort of push them a little bit with the plastic end of a screwdriver and they pop right out. Let's continue on this side here. Now behind this little magic door here are all four of the jets. Pull this center screw out. Oh, look at this. This whole gasket's just literally falling apart. Okay, pull that guy out. We'll set that over here. This little guy just pops off, hopefully. There it goes. And we want to inspect our gasket in here as well. These get pretty old and kind of brittle, and this one doesn't look actually very great, to be honest. It's little bits coming off of it and stuff, so we'll probably have to replace that. Now, these jets are also slotted, but it looks like somebody's used a screwdriver and sort of buggered them up a little bit. That's a bummer. So we're going to use our nut driver to get them out. You can see it's right there. Somebody is really... Uh, they just twisted that with a way too small of screwdriver probably or something. I don't know what they did, but that's messed that up. That's a perfect little piece of metal that could fall inside the engine. There we go. Take that off. Yeah, it's got the same thing going on here. There we go. Pull the bottom jets out. We have 55 for our idles and 130s for our mains. Mains go on the bottom, idles go on the top. Okay. Now we also want to look inside this chamber as well and see what we see. And I'm seeing some yucky stuff in here. It's a little corrosion and just some yucky stuff. So we'll get that nice and clean. So that's what we're seeing inside the actual jet chamber. We're definitely going to need to clean some of this stuff. Now for our air bleed adjustments down here. I always want to run them in first to find out where they were set, but they should be about the same. Let's see where they are. You want to be very careful. They're, they're just made out of brass and they have a very fine point on them. So we're not going to grind them in. We just want to feel it just seat. A quarter turn? Yeah, that's not right. Okay, well, that's not right. We'll pull this guy out. And there's the fine point that's on these things. You want to be very careful with that. You don't want to bugger that up at all. You want to take a look at these guys and make sure they're not bent. These look like they're fine. They're just a little dirty, but they look like they're fine. That's a half turn. Three quarters turn. That's still not right either. And they should be very close to each other as well. So quarter turn versus three quarters turn, that's not right either. Well, in order to get these guys out, I'm going to take the throttle body off the bottom at this point. It'll just give me better access to knock those guys through. And like so many other of these, take a look at those screws. They're all buggered on the, on the ends as well. You want to always make sure you use the proper size screwdriver for the actual screw here. And I believe there's a lock washer with each one. Yep, there they are. Okay, I'll put this over in our tray for our body parts. Okay. Oh boy. What did they use on this? Okay, there we go. Well, our throttle body actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. You want to check the shaft here and make sure there isn't any wobble in it any at all. Or air can actually enter in through that shaft and completely screw up the tune of the engine. This feels really good. Everything feels good on there. All right, we can set that aside. Carefully work off this gasket. There we go. All right, gasket's in great shape actually. That's good. Now we have a few more bits and bobs here. We have a couple of brass, they look like big screws. They're actually one-way valves, one of them's a plug, and a couple of other bits. So we're going to pull those out so we can get behind there and clean all of this. And these are pretty darn buggered up as well. There we go. Should be a little aluminum washer on the back of this, and there is. Set this guy down here. Yuck, there's sludge in this thing. Yuck. 
It's important to point out here that both these two plugs that I just pulled out have the same threads and they will actually even go in each other's little hole, but they're very different. This one is just a simple jet, but this one has a little ball check valve in it and it's specific to the accelerator pump. It's very important that you don't get these things mixed up. For this guy here, it's pretty hard to get a screwdriver that's wide enough to get all the way across. So I actually have a uh, sort of a scraper tool here that works pretty well for this sort of thing. Keep from buggering it up at least. All right, pull this guy out. There's our gasket. It's a fiber gasket on this one. Now let's see if we can get our emulsifier tubes out by pushing from behind very, very carefully. All right, I think it's coming loose. Yep, it is. These should just fall right in. And they're a little gummy. But you can wiggle them back and forth to get them out. There we go. Ugh, it smells terrible too. Now inside this little guy is the actual emulsifier tube. So it has a series of little jets and things in it. So we're going to want to clean all of this thoroughly. There it goes. It's moving a little more. There it goes. Okay. It's pretty well wedged in there. All right, and we remove our, oh boy, and it's in there too. There we go. Remove our emulsifier tube there. I am seeing nice clear holes in here, so I'm not seeing any massive amounts of gunk, which is a good thing. This little flat plate here that's held on with the two screws is really just a cover. So these carburetors were used in a lot of different cars. In fact, I've seen them in BMWs before, the same era. And this is where the choke mounts if, the, if there's enough room for it. But on a 356, this part is right up against the shroud, so there's no place for a choke. And this is the reason why a 356 doesn't have a choke. So it can make life a little bit interesting trying to get the thing started. So I'm gonna pull this off only so we can get to the ports and the areas behind it. And somebody has buggered these guys up badly. Okay, and this guy here. Yeah. They have kind of a funky little uh, lock washer on the back of them. One of these sort of tooth lock washers. It's all squished down. It's kind of strange. I've seen that on some and I've seen that others don't have it, but this little guy should just come off as well. Everybody's required a little bit of a hit. There it goes. Okay. We have another little black brass plug that we can pull out right here. And this little guy, this teeny weeny little plug doesn't have any washer or gasket on it. In order to get the jets out for the accelerator pumps, they're a little hard. I try to get a screwdriver in the throat here and sort of just push on them and work them loose. Like this, and just sort of, there we go. Try to push it backwards. There it comes. And that's all really there is to it. It's not that big a deal. They're just little guys. They have the deeniest little pinhole on one side of them. And the other side actually has a flat spot on it. So they will only go in one way with of course the hole pointing straight down into the barrels. But just be aware of that when you go to put them back on. I'm not gonna bother to take the actual Venturis out. There's no real reason. If we were gonna change them at all, we could easily take them out. There's two screws, one here and one here. They just have a point on the end of them and they just lock these Venturis in place. So this is kind of a cool carburetor. You can swap out Venturis, you can swap out jets, everything. They're actually really neat little carburetors. I'm a big fan of these. They're, they seem to work well and when they're set up properly, they run great. It's in great shape. I'm not seeing you know much corrosion around these edges at all. This all looks really, really good. Moving back to our top here, we've got a couple of bits we want to take off. This is the needle and seat in here. Now this is the accelerator pump, this guy here, and it was locked. I had a heck of a time getting it out, so I don't think it's actually working properly on our body. So I want to get this guy out and take a good look at it and see what's going on in there. So to get the accelerator pump out, there's a little cotter pin in there we need to take out, and you can push this as far up as it'll go to just get enough access to get the cotter pin off. So that's what we're gonna do. There we go. And then we can work this guy out. And there we go. Yay. Our needle and seat here is a 12 millimeter. 
The float level on these carburetors is set by the number of gaskets that are on the actual needle and seat. Not my favorite way of setting a float level, but it is what it is. This has two gaskets on it, so just kind of remember that. Okay, well that's about it for the top. Next what I want to do is figure out why the plunger here for the accelerator pump just isn't, doesn't seem like it's, it was so tight and so hard to pull out. So let's figure out what's going on with that. The bore inside here feels nice. It doesn't feel all rough or anything. So this should actually just kind of go in and work, but it, it's really stiff. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, this thing's hard as a rock. All right, well that's it. <laughs> These are actually leather and they have a spring inside of them. It goes all the way around and this one is hard as a rock. It's really, really stiff. And I can see where it just looks like it's shiny on there. It shouldn't be shiny. So that's a problem. So we're gonna have to replace this guy. You, they come in the rebuild kits anyways. So we'll just go ahead and replace this. In order to clean most of our carburetor parts, I'm just gonna give them a dunk here in this uh, parts cleaner, carburetor parts cleaner thing. It works really well. I've used this quite a bit actually and the parts come out nice and clean. All right, it's a little stinky, but you can always pop the top back on once you put everything back in. Comes with this handy dandy little little uh, basket here that we can put our parts in. One thing you don't want to put in are gaskets. So when you have our rubber gaskets and stuff, uh, you want to pull all those out first. You remember our rubber gasket here that's in the jet cover? We'll want to pull that out. So just work it out carefully. You want to make sure you don't cause any damage at all to the metal bit. Work that guy out. All right. Set that aside, we'll throw that in our little thing. Our accelerator pump jets also have a rubber O-ring on them, so we'll wanna take that off first. We're gonna be super careful with these guys. Set that little guy aside there. These little dental instruments with hooks and things on them really help, and this one's kinda nice because it's flat on the end, so there's not much chance you're gonna poke or scratch anything, they're nice and rounded. Just add all the parts you need to clean to your little basket there. Then add your basket back to the can, and then your larger parts go on top. And it's a bit of a game of Tetris to try and get them to all fit in the cleaner. And we're gonna let them sit for about uh, an hour or so in that solution. That, this stuff's pretty good. It really does cut through pretty much all the gunk in the carburetors. If you want, you can kind of slosh it around a little bit. Once the parts have marinated long enough, go ahead and pull them out. And I used a little bit of brake cleaner to clean them off. You wanna make sure all the little orifices are all clean and all little holes and stuff everywhere. Then use a bit of compressed air to completely clean and dry out all of the parts. From the factory, the throttle bodies were painted black, so it's always a nice touch to go back and hit them with a little bit of high temperature enamel. All right, we have all of our parts completely cleaned. Everything looks great. We're all set to reassemble everything. It's really just the reverse of how it was all taken apart, but it looks pretty cool all laid out, huh? I didn't find anything completely out of the normal, and I didn't find a lot of serious goopies in it. Now, I think our biggest problem was our accelerator pump, and I have a rebuild kit for this carburetor, so I have new bits. I have a new accelerator pump, piston right here, so we're all good there. And I've got other new bits everywhere and new gaskets and such, so let's go ahead and put this thing back together. One thing real quick before I get started is I like to use silicone paste on any of the rubber gaskets and things just because I think that like if they have to go into a, like a little cylinder and you have to kind of run them in, they have a tendency to rip if, it's, if they're completely dry. And this silicone paste really lubes up those rubber bits that go in there really well and makes your life a lot easier. I love this stuff. So I use it all the time on anything rubber. Okay, there's our carburetor. What do you think? I think it looks great. Backside looks good too. All nice and clean inside. 
I think we're all ready to put it back on the car. Well, reinstalling our carburetor is just the reverse of taking it off, pretty simple. I do have a new gasket for the manifold, so we'll go ahead and throw that on as well. All right, let's get to putting it back on. I have our left carburetor completely rebuilt. It looks great, doesn't it? Nice and shiny and everything. And I painted the base on this one as well. So we're all set to reinstall it in the car. Go ahead and put it in. We'll get the car started and see how it runs. There it goes. There's all four. Yay! That certainly was better. All right, let's go check for leaks. That's actually a great idle for the cold, for a completely cold car. All right, we're looking for leaks on both sides with both carburetors. Everything looks nice and dry. If you do end up with any leaks, a little green sealing Loctite works great. You also want to use your nose, super important. Sometimes you'll smell the gas before you'll even see it. It's nice and even. I really like that. Boy, that's, that's, that's a, such a difference. Boy, the car would not start before, and look at it now. All right, well, I'm going to call that a success. Hold on just a sec. Okay, well that's great. I think we're in a really good starting spot here. Now I need to go out and I need to tune the little air bleeds, those brass screws on the side of the carburetors, but I can't do that until I get the engine good and warm. So let's take the car out for a little toodle, warm it up a bit and get those guys set. We'll come back and we'll adjust the linkages. All right, here we go. We're back from our first step of tuning the carburetors. We've got our air bleeds set right where they need to be. So really kind of the process is get the car hot, you rotate them until you kind of feel the car poop out and then you open it back up until it starts to poop out again, then you roll it back in. And what you're looking for is just to sort of get it right in the center where it drops off on one side and drops on the other, sort of like a quarter turn either way and you're right in the middle. And we've got all four of them set. Now that we have that done, which is always the first step and you do that with your air cleaners on the next step is to pull our air cleaners off and what we're going to do is we're going to balance the carburetors now i have a pretty in-depth video on how to do this so i'm just going to kind of run through this reasonably quickly but it's uh, pretty simple we're going to set the idle first so disconnect all the linkages and we're going to use our airflow meter here this little guy on top of the carburetor to make sure that both of them are pulling an equal draft at idle and then we hook up our throttle Throttle linkage back up and hopefully nothing changes. We double check it. That way we want to make sure that throttle linkage isn't pulling on one of the carburetors at idle. Once that's all set and everything's good there, then we crank the engine up to about, oh, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000 RPM. We just want to get it going and get it up well above idle. And what we're going to do is adjust our linkage on each side to make sure that both carburetors are drawing exactly the same at speed as well. And that will, that will involve adjusting the lengths of our linkages if it's off at all and when we get done with that boy it makes a it actually makes a pretty big difference if it's off it's amazing then both sides will be pulling the same amount and pulling their weight equally it really does help to make the car run a bit smoother and peppier well that's it for the carburetor tune i think it turned out great in the end a little bit of a rocky road getting there but we got it done i think the carburetors are well tuned they're well balanced and they're not leaking that's a big plus all right well i hope you enjoyed 
enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. There's going to be more videos in this series. I still have to change the oil and the transmission fluid and a few other little special things on the car and you're not going to want to miss any of them. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe right now and then hit the little bell next to it so you're notified next time we upload a video. All right, well, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Okay, well, until the next video, safe travels. Bye.